You can use AI to edit your images right within OpenArt. The AI editor is packed with a ton of different tools you can use and today I'm going to show you some of the tools and how you can use them. This video is also sponsored by OpenArt.ai and there's a link in the description if you want to check them out. Accessing the editor is pretty simple. I'll show you two ways to do it. The first one is come down to edit image on the left here and that takes us into the image editor. And wherever you're going on the site, once you've actually entered a different area, there's this edit tab over here. And if I want to add an image, I click this button here, select the image I want to upload, and it will pop it on the canvas. And naturally I have some tools here, like smart select, and where I can go through and select various objects just by clicking on them. I can also remove the background, I can crop. So I've hit this crop tool, I can crop this in a bit if I want to. When I'm happy, I tick. I can add text, I can download the image as that I've been editing and move from there. And all the editor tools are across the top. Sometimes you'll get some info pop up next to the image or under the image. Otherwise, this area here is just for navigating OpenArt itself. So you get an idea as to where all the tools are. Now, because I'm zoomed in, there's an arrow here that allows me to go across and see more tools. So you can see just how many different items there are to work with in this editor. But what if I want to open up something I've created using OpenArt AI? Rather than downloading and re-uploading, I'm going to head back out to the dashboard into create image. And from here, I can select an image like this image of the stormtrooper. And I'm going to start by removing some objects from this image. So the way that works is I'm here and we know that the remove object tool is in the top toolbar of the editor. But how do we get this image into the editor? For one, I can go up to here to click edit or we have some tools that go directly into these tools along the top here, like remove, expand, stylize. So if I want to remove an object, I can click on remove and it places the image in the editor and it already has the remove tool selected. So I just click that if I want to remove things. To put it quite simply, I have the default remove tool up. I have quick erase turned on. So if I want to remove this guy over here, because I have quick erase turned on, I can actually change my brush size with this slider here. I simply select him, let go, and he's been removed. However, there is more that we can do as well. For example, I can choose magic erase, and this is for more complex areas. So if I want to select, say, this guy here as well, but I also want to get rid of this trail of lights that are kind of not necessarily connected and this blue spot here, I can select different areas. I can even bring up the creativity level, so it will actually generate something a little bit more interesting. And before I go ahead, I can click undo or redo anytime down here, or I can invert my selection to leave him behind and remove everything else. I'm going to revert back and I can even click on minus here, bring the size down and remove part of that selection if I want to. So you can actually add and subtract pretty easily if you really want to neaten things up. Once I'm ready, all I do is click remove now you can see it's been removed. However, because I missed part of the shoe, it's generated an element that we might not want. All I need to do is come down here to add. I'm going to go to quick erase and sometimes you just need to give it a second touch up. And we've been able to clear up that spot. But what I want to move on to now is in painting, basically using AI to edit what's in your image. So I have this image here created using open art. If I click on it, already in paint is selected. I can click here if I want to select it again, but it gives me a bit of information, which I'm going to get rid of. But this is where we can select an area and add a prompt. So again, if I select this area here and type in something like futuristic sunglasses, glowing green. If there's anything I want to exclude, I can use that as a negative prompt or I can choose which model to use. We've got different models. So if you're working on an anime style image, you can use anime. If you're working on a fantasy style image, you can use fantasy. This is photo realistic. I can also add an image if I want to create like an image prompt, which is pretty handy. So you've got a few different options here. Magic mode, I'm gonna leave on auto. Otherwise you've got some basic settings here, but I'm pretty much gonna leave them where they are and I can choose how many images I wanna produce. I'm just gonna go back to say two. So I've got two images to choose from in this area here. I'm gonna click create. You see I have option one and option two. I'm gonna go with this one. I think that looks all right. I click add to canvas. And now it's added that image in. I have futuristic sunglasses added to the image. And of course, I can continue to in-paint by selecting the image, clicking in-paint. Maybe I select an image on the right over here, type in a military badge, metallic. This time I'm gonna go for general quality instead of photorealistic. Hit create. And again, I have a few different options. I like this one here. 
That one looks pretty good. Add to canvas. You can see how, piece by piece, I can edit my image to get it looking pretty much how I want to. What about expanding or removing the background? I've now got a different image in here I created for another video. If I click on this, first of all, maybe I decided I want to see more of this guy here. I click on the expand button. And if I zoom out a little bit, I'm gonna hold down control on my mouse wheel. I get this bounding box. I can move this and create some space around the image. So maybe I want it to come down a little bit. Maybe I want it to shoot up a little if I want to see more of the background. This is a really simple, easy to use tool. I come down, I can even choose an aspect ratio if I wanted it to be square. So I can actually lock it to a one-to-one -one if I want to and bring that in until it gets in that right position. So you can actually set the aspect ratio or even the dimensions here. So you can see we have a square image. I can add in a prompt if I want to. So I'm going to say a man with an axe outside Pixar style cartoon. Once again, I can choose to add image or a number of images here. I'm going to bring those number of images back to three. So I have three to choose from and I'll use three credits. So if you're looking to save credits, changing this will help. Click create. And then over the right here, we have some options. We have this one here with the objects in front, a version with the man with short legs or just long legs cropped off. This one looks like our best bet. I add it to the canvas and it actually adds both images to the canvas here and at any point I can download them individually. So it just goes to show you can work with multiple images on a canvas at once. I bring him up here and so far that looks pretty good. But if I want to remove the background or change the background, I've got a few tools. For one, if I click on this over here, I can click remove background and it will automatically remove the background of that image. And then again, I can download here as a PNG and I get a nice transparent PNG of my guy with an ax. Coming back to our original image, if I want to change the background, if I simply click on this image, click on the background tool up here, it will detect the background of the image and select it so I can see what it's actually selecting for that background. And to the right over here, I can remove the background, as we said before, or I can even change the background. I click on change background. I can remove this pro tip and describe the new background I want to generate. So instead of an outdoor sort of like click cliff area, maybe I just say deep in a forest filled with trees, Pixar animation style. I can also choose to exclude animals. So I have trees, but no animals. I can add an image if I want to. I want to match the original style and I'm going to generate four images this time. So I have a background, a few different backgrounds to choose from. I click create. And as before on the right, I get a few options that I can choose from. And it's done a pretty consistent job with each of them, keeping the theme the same with that forest and trees in the background, but also keeping that Pixar animation style whilst giving us a bit of variety in our choice. You can also change the style of an image by using the stylize tool in the editor. So I've uploaded this image I got from Pexels and it's a pretty standard looking image of a guy kind of looking outside. If I want to change the style of this image, I can come up to stylize and I can either upload my own style, which we will in a minute, or I can come to here and choose something like this line sketch. And I'm gonna bring the style strength up a little bit. If I want to, I can describe him in the prompt. However, I think it'll do a pretty good job just straight up and I can create two or more images. So I simply select my image, choose my style and adjust these options, then hit create. You can see on the right over here how it's used the same framing to create these two different styles of images but it doesn't have to just stop at that style. But let's head back and upload a style instead. So I've got a photograph of a woman here, but the lighting is vastly different than the lighting of this image. So let's scroll down, click create to see what we get. You can see how we've been able to get a vastly different style of picture framed up the same as before using that style feature. And of course we can go ahead, upload different styles or try different styles that are already there to see what images we're able to create using the stylized function. And the results can be pretty unique and often surprising depending on what images you use. But you can also change facial expressions using the AI face tools. So when I come in, I've got this image here, which I generated for another video again. This is not a photo, but a generation. If I click on this image, go up to face, I get a whole bunch of different options down here I can play with. Now this might look a little complex, but I can also come up to some presets. He looks pretty serious. So if I go here and click happy, we get a happy face. I come over here and try surprised. He looks a bit surprised. I can go to sleepy. He looks a bit tired there. I can also even go to looking away. 
You can see he's looking off to one side or even frown, which looks much the same as before. I'm going to head back to surprised and I can change the head direction a little bit. So if I want him to look up a little more, I can grab this slider and bring it up. You can see he's looking up a bit more. I'm just going to bring this a bit closer. I can change his head direction. So maybe I want him to look at this panel a bit more. So I move him right. He's looking off sort of to one side, even the head direction a bit. And his mouth is wide open, or you can have the mouth width as a much wider mouth and really open that up. So you've got a few different options here you can play with in order to customize the look of the face on any of the images you upload. As you can see, there's a lot of possibilities with different facial expressions and different image types using this tool. You can also use edit people to fix things like hands and faces. So if I've got this image here, which is generated with an older model of stable diffusion, and there's some issues. If I zoom in, this hand's a little bit weird. So is this one actually. I come up. The face isn't too bad, but it's also a little weird. So by clicking on this image and going to edit people, I can select an area. So I select this hand here first. So I'm going to scroll down and just click minus so I can get rid of this part here. But I can select this hand, hit correct hands, or maybe even select both hands. I have correct hands selected. I'm just going to go to images and hit create. And now I have my two options. When you zoom in, you can clearly see the hands are looking a little bit more human and kind of less globby like from before. But this time I have a different image. I think this image has a really good aesthetic, except the face is just a little bit sort of not quite right. So now I go, I've got the image selected. I click edit people. I select the face area, click enhance face. I'm going to go to images. I also want to put a prompt in here. So I say, I have a woman's face staring, focused, darkly lit with small blue and red light to describe the face I want to see. I click create. I've got two options here. I think this one is pretty much spot on. So we've been able to go from this, which is a little bit messy, through to this. It's a very powerful tool for fine tuning your AI art. Now we can also use certain elements to compose an image by using the blend board function. So the way it works is I have this background image here. So what I can do is this is generated using OpenArt AI and I can start a blend board, but this will start a blank empty blend board for us to add images into. I'm gonna click on this image and click this button to convert it to a blend board. Now I've zoomed out a little bit so we can see all this stuff, but down here you'll see there's some image layers and I can add an image layer such as this woman here, click open, and it automatically cuts out the background and places her on the board. And I can position her here, kind of like she's looking off into the distance. Now remember these are references and we're not gonna get the exact same image. So I'm gonna come in and add another image, our little mech man here. And he can just sit here like he's in the background behind this girl. However, he's sitting in front of her at the moment. So I come over to my layers, click the little three line icon here and just drag him underneath. And now I have a bit of an image layout that I can start to work with. So what I simply do with my blend board now, I click on it. And we can add text in here as well, but I'm going to choose, I'm going to go with some auto settings and the higher the creativity, the more it's going to sort of change the image. So we're going to expect the faces to change a little bit, but for the best results, I do recommend adding a prompt. I have a cyberpunk woman in the foreground, a man in a mech suit behind her to the right, standing in a cyberpunk city. So now leaving all the settings pretty much at default, I click blend and we will, might have to make some adjustments, but otherwise we'll see what results we get. And we have two options here. Now, I don't know if this is for sure, but it looks like we've got the subtle blend at the bottom and the strong blend at the top. Looking at the subtle blend, for what we've been working at with this image, it hasn't worked too well. But we switch to the strong blend, and we get this really, really awesome image. We've got a little bit of an unwanted element over here, but otherwise the image is starting to look pretty good but we can make some adjustments in order to try and dial it in a little bit better. So I'm gonna go back to edit. This time I'm gonna go blend strong and I'm gonna bring the creativity down to say about uh, 0.27. Let's see if we can get something a little bit closer to our layout. Blend 
And now, this is looking a bit natural. We've got rid of this head over here. The amount of details added to the scene is pretty good. And we've been able to use these elements to create image and sort of lay it out the way we want. So that's a pretty powerful feature. And if you dive in a little deeper, play with the settings, play with the prompt, you could probably nail it down a bit further, or you can even close out add to the canvas, and you can even edit this image further using the other edit tools to get what you're after, which is one of the most powerful things behind having an image editor in your AI art platform. For instance, if I wanna get rid of these marks on her cheeks, I can just simply go to my remove tool, I've got quick erase, and I can cover these little marks here and remove those elements. And of course, I can click on edit people, enhance face, select this face here, type a description of a man's face, African masculine, create and we get a few results here to choose from that looks a little bit better a little bit more like what we're after so you can see how you can use these tools to compose and lay out an image and then edit it to get it to get it to the point where you're happy with it and then go ahead from there another useful tool is find and replace to replace objects in a scene so I have this image of a cat which was just generated in the image generator over here and if I click on this image come across because I am zoomed in for the video I can use find and replace and literally have the same example here I'm going to use. I click find and replace, remove the tip and I search for a cat. I can replace it with a dog. I'm going to go to two images, click create and straight away we've got an image of a dog. If I add that to the canvas, you can clearly see how the scene is basically identical but we've managed to select the cat and replace it with a dog. But it doesn't have to be quite that simplistic. For example, in this image here, we have a woman holding a cassette tape. So again, I click the image, find and replace, search for a cassette tape and I replace it with a smartphone. So I can basically highlight the tape and put a smartphone in its place. Again, I'll go with two images, click create. And now we have two results. The first one shows the screen. Next one shows the back of the phone. So you can see how we can use this tool pretty effectively to remove and replace objects in an image. But finally, the last thing we'll touch on is your ability to upscale images right within the editor itself. So before I go ahead and download this image, maybe I want it to be a little higher resolution. So again, I've selected it and come across here to upscale and it will bring that image across into the OpenAI Upscaler where you can basically go through, find the model you think is best. I'm gonna go with Precise, 4K, hit Create. Then we can open our image, do a quick little before and after, download it. And now we've been able to double the resolution from 2048 by 1153 to 4096 by 2332. So you can see that this AI powered image editing suite is incredibly powerful and constantly evolving and growing. The way you can take images or AI art or anything that's simply not created by AI, but then use AI to edit, fix areas, change things, expand them, makes it incredibly powerful. And I highly recommend going in and having a bit of a play around with this editor to see what you can achieve. And I haven't touched on everything, just the main tools. There's a lot more there to be discovered. So if you like the look of this tool, check Check out openart.ai, they are the sponsor of today's video, there's a link in the description. I want to thank them for sponsoring this video, otherwise I also want to thank you for watching the video. And that is the video for today guys, if you liked it, please consider giving it a like, otherwise have a great day and I hope to see you again soon.